Well, good morning, everybody, and um, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, before we get started, I'd like to thank you and our presenters for taking the time to participate in the first ever Office of Employer Initiatives virtual conference. We're all experiencing a new era of conference attendance. And while I know it would be great to be face-to-face, -face, um, possibly even at TWC's annual conference, the ability to have you join us online presents an exciting opportunity to share information with you at a time when communication and strong partnerships are more important than ever. We wanna thank you for all that you do to support and build your communities. Texas would not be the economic powerhouse it is without the work you do each and every day. We're proud to be your partner in workforce development and we want to see that grow. And that's what we're here to do today and tomorrow. This is the first multiple day conference for the Office of Employer Initiatives and based on the efforts of the entire TWC team and on our outstanding lineup of speakers, I know it will be a success. I hope you'll gain additional knowledge and insight during the conference as you hear about how some of our college, education, economic development, and nonprofit partners have put available TWC program resources to work for their communities. But before we dive in and learn from our panelists, I have the privilege of introducing TWC Chairman Brian Daniel. As many of you know, Governor Abbott appointed Chairman Daniel to the commission in July 2019, and he serves as the representative for the public promoting and supporting the growth of Texas's world-class employers and talented workforce. So um, as I was saying, um, this opportunity to, to work with you guys and meet with you remotely um, is unique because I think previously we've had an opportunity um, to meet in short sessions. The Office of Employer Initiatives has had an opportunity to meet with you in short sessions and talk about individual programs but we really wanna reach out to our partners and have the ability to have an open dialogue about many of the resources that are available to all of our economic development partners, um, our workforce solutions partners, um, as well as our community colleges around the state in order to upskill businesses, workers, and help really build local economies, which in turn helps the Texas economy be successful. Um, and you know we would we know um, as I said earlier that Texas wouldn't be the the economic powerhouse that it is um, without the work that y'all are doing each day and we want to be able to help you with that. Um, we want to serve as as your resource and I hope as you participate and, and listen to our panelists both today and tomorrow that you might learn um, about some different aspects of the programs even if you're familiar with some of them um, and and gain some, um, ideas about how they might be able to work for you and your communities. Um, I think really learning from others and how they have been able to leverage um, state and local resources, it's a wonderful thing. And we've been very fortunate in the state of Texas to have outstanding leadership who have really supported workforce development throughout the state, because we know that companies um, are choosing to locate here because of our top-notch workforce, and we only want to see that grow in the future. We know that the pipeline for our workers is going to continue to grow, and so it's our job working collaboratively with, with all of you to figure out the best strategies to do that. Um, and you know, the legislature has entrusted TWC with many of the programs that the state has that um, do that very thing. So. Um, we, we definitely want to make sure that you are up to speed on that. Um, obviously, we don't have time. We're not going to have time, even over two days, to get into every detail. But as we do um, talk about each program, if something spurs your interest, I hope that you will reach out to us. Um, and of course, you can always reach us um, at our email address, which is skills at twc.state.tx.us. Um, so any question you have, we're here to help. Um, even if it's not necessarily about one of these programs, if you would like to connect with us, we're happy to um, put you in touch with other resources here within TWC. We really want to be seen as a resource for our partners throughout the state, um, as well as you know businesses, employers who are, are, are looking to upskill um, their employees and looking to grow in the state, because that's, that's really what we all want to 
want to see happen. So, um, Julia, do we have any updates on connections? Yes, he is. Um, Chair, Chairman Daniel is with us now. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, Chairman Daniel, um, we are happy to have you kicking us off today. Sorry, there were some technical difficulties, um, but we're glad that you can join us. How about now? Yes. Yes, we can see you now. We have overcome all the technical difficulties, maybe. I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, and I did, I was listening to a, a great deal of your, um, you know, trying to carry the day until we could get me online. And I appreciate it very much. Although you gave the bulk of my speech, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to contribute at this point, but I'm going to give it a try. Let me start off by saying uh, Aaron Ray, who's in the audience, Aaron Ray has the most spectacular, um, what, what do you call that, a little icon uh, for when her camera is off uh, on the screen here. Uh, Aaron, I uh, wholeheartedly approve of the double T, uh, excellent use of that, and I've got to figure out a way to copy that. Uh, myself. It's, uh, I, as soon as I tuned in this morning, there was that, uh, that double T facing me, and I think that means it's going to be a pretty good day. we got a lot to cover. I've got a, a limited amount of time uh, because I know that there's a lot of really solid speakers on the agenda. Uh, for, uh, and, and the agenda is jam-packed, man. There's some great stuff on here, and I know it's hard to get on and stay on. <laughs> Uh, get on and stay on all day on a Zoom call. Uh, it's just tough. There's so many things going on and it's kind of like watching TV all day, uh, but I hope you will. Uh, and I have a high suspicion that we'll be archiving a, a lot of this information because I see the recording light is on. Uh, and so I hope we'll be able to break up all this wonderful content and, and keep this available for people uh, throughout the year. I, it's just so many resources and so many opportunities for us um, it's hard sometimes to digest it all, but I think there's some great things going on out there and some real opportunities uh, for us to put some things to work. Man, you know, we're, we're, we're almost to the end of the year, and if we really stop and reflect on 2020, there's so many things we can say about it. Um, the word I've been using most regularly, most often, is, is just disruptive. 2020, uh, for, for a whole lot of reasons. Um, the obvious reasons and, and some less obvious reasons was, was just a really disruptive year. And I think that like most disruptions, it, it just creates change. People are uncomfortable by change. That's just human nature. And we can't really deal with change until we're in it and, and sort of dealing with it. If we, if we just look at the pandemic and we understand the disruption that the pandemic brought us, um, and, and you just boil it down to numbers, which, which is imperfect because because we're talking about people. Um, but if we just look at the numbers, you begin to understand the scope of what those of us that are working in workforce and economic development and all these related kind of fields, some of the challenges that we're trying to address on behalf of people. You know, Texas set a record in February of 2020, February this year, of the most number of Texans that were working uh, in Texas at any one time. 30 days later, 30 days later, we saw initial unemployment claims that were 60 times higher uh, than they had been in February. 30 days after that, our phone was ringing 3,000 times a minute. 3,000 times a minute, that's 16 million phone calls in one week, all related to unemployment, unemployment claims, uh, other situations that families were facing. If we move forward to today, we see that, that uh, TWC has paid out uh, a little over 6 million initial claims for unemployment. Um, that's not quite 6 million people because um, some, some folks have multiple claims depending on how they're working and the different things that they're looking for. If you would, I've been working on COVID for 60% of my tenure at uh, TWC. So since I've been a commissioner and chairman, 60% uh, of the time I've been here has been spent working on the COVID pandemic and all the related um, different responses that TWC has had to that. Um, if you really want to want to do some math and do a little crunch, I'm not I'm not best at that. But if if you you know how you have dog years, we, we say a dog year is, is seven years. It, it really feels like we have pandemic years. We do about seven times the number of claims in Texas this year that we did last year. And it sure feels like the last 10 months, it feels like seven years to me. And so it is something that we continue to work on. 
you know, we try not to let this, this, uh, the sense of overwhelmingness get to us. It's a lot of people. We've, we've paid out more than $35 billion in benefits, both state and federal. And, and these numbers are staggering. But, but uh, there's a little bit of upside uh, that I'm seeing in the economy that I think translates well for us as we enter in to 2021. For example, we've had six months of sustained economic growth. We've added jobs each month for the last six months. Uh, since we saw a big decrease in April, uh, we've seen things moving in the right direction. Now, you'll see the unemployment rate fluctuate. People come in and out of the labor force, and it, and it changes your denominator on the equation. So sometimes a higher unemployment rate uh, doesn't mean that we didn't add jobs. We just might have added fewer jobs than we added the month before. I think the fundamentals of the economy uh, remain uh, strong. I think there are things that we can build on. I think that some industries, some businesses, um, some entrepreneurs are still charting a little bit of a course. You know, the pandemic has given us some things that we didn't necessarily understand well uh, in terms of how we would do business. And so there's been a large conversion to different ways to deliver services, different ways to deliver products, different ways to deliver food, and different ways that consumers interact with businesses. And I think during this 10-month period uh, that we've been working on this, it really uh, has uh, found some, we've really found some ways uh, for businesses to continue to deliver what their customers need. And it, and it changes the landscape a little bit. You know, uh, really, when you're under pressure like we are right now, I think that we start to see innovation take effect. The same innovations that these companies and other businesses have taken in serving their customers, I think you're seeing a lot of, of government agencies doing some innovations. TWC certainly has, and I wanna talk about that real briefly. I wanna talk about innovation uh, in a larger sense before we do that. Innovation is good. Innovation is good when it helps you solve problems quickly. And, and we've had to solve a number of problems quickly uh, through this pandemic time. We've seen companies go totally virtual. We've seen technology online that let companies, uh, let their employees work from anywhere. Uh, we've seen companies uh, find ways to use technology uh, to better serve both their employees and their customers. These things don't necessarily mean we need fewer employees. In fact, sometimes the technology means more. Innovations big and small have really helped us find ways for our economy to continue to show the strength that the Texas economy has been for the last, actually, probably a decade. Little things, margaritas to go. I like that one. That was a good innovation. We have uh, different ways we watch um, movies and television. It's simple things for the household. It's larger things for the economy. The sum of all those things really puts us in a position uh, to push this economy um, that we're seeing wanting to grow, that we're seeing wanting to thrive into the next year and really find some ways to focus on workforce when we did that. In March, uh, I remember in early, early March, uh, we had a commission meeting where our, our, our unemployment insurance director told us that there was an anomaly in the number of claims filed because it had gone up and there was no reason for it. A week later is when we really understood what the pandemic was all about. So we, at that point, started quickly discussing ways that TWC might be effective, might be in, in some ways um, very efficient at delivering the kinds of help that people we thought might need during the pandemic. So we set aside some money. Uh, through March and April and part of May, we studied how our programs could best be fitted to help people. One of the things that we did is we knew we weren't gonna be able to do a lot of in-person kind of events. And so we set aside that money uh, for a, 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 a massive uh, open source training program uh, that we're running today through our workforce solutions offices. Um, any person can sign up, get some online training that I think provides some legitimate upskill, reskill uh, information that they can use to bolster their career. You know, if you find yourself out of work and you don't want to be through no fault of your own um, and, and you've perfected your unemployment plan and you're, you're thinking about how to get back in the workforce, take, take advantage of this training program that's available right now. It's online. It's something you can do uh, from anywhere. You can get to a computer 
And, and there's legitimate things in there, I think, for office workers, manufacturing workers, and others that really serve that reskill, upskill niche that is becoming increasingly critical for how the workforce is going to continue to grow in this state. At the same time, uh, we were looking at the money that we had set aside for skills development fund for the year and realizing that uh, community colleges and other uh, educational providers uh, were not going to be doing business as usual. And so the need to reprogram some skills development fund money in a way to make it usable for our community colleges and others, um, that, that became of critical importance. And so we did that. Uh, we have what I think is a, is a fantastic uh, streamlined application that lets folks plug right into that money and uh, put that to work. And we've seen an incredible response to that. That skills development fund money has set aside some more in-depth, some more specialized training uh, for folks, reskill, upskill, an opportunity to really get back in the workforce or, or in a lot of cases, move up in the workforce to a different job, a newer job, a better job uh, that you've been looking at for some time. All of these things are going on and, and these programs that we are able to deliver from TWC doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, groups like this Office of Employer Initiatives that's putting on the meeting here today, uh, other groups here at the agency are really working with our constituents to make sure that these programs are in place, uh, accessible, operational, so that you can put that to work for you immediately. Now they're gonna talk this, uh, this week the rest of this week, today and tomorrow, about a lot of programs uh, that are available here from the agency. There's people uh, that can help walk you through every facet of that program. Now, I don't always think that programs are the solution to the problem, but they certainly can be a big part of the solution, particularly when there's dollars that, say, a local community is having trouble uh, getting to the end. If we can help be the last dollar on a good project for training, a good project for matching employers with the right workforce, a good project just simply for bolstering your local workforce to be ready for what's next. You know, I hope you'll give us an opportunity to do that. And, th and that sort of leads me into what I think is a pretty critical point. Uh, we're adding jobs each month. There's programs in place to help people uh, get the kind of upskill, reskill training uh, that they might be looking for to ensure uh, that they can remain strong in the workplace. The fundamentals of the economy remain sound like we've already talked about. And, and then 2021 is on the horizon. We're seeing companies make more and more announcements as they figure out the virtual world and how they're gonna interact in it, what they're gonna do in terms of hiring and job creation really across the state. It's been pretty interesting to see the geographic distribution of that because I think it's been pretty sound and that's totally organic. That's companies doing their thing uh, with very little influence uh, from anyone other than local communities who say, yes, uh, we can do that. I think that for many of us that are, are practitioners in this space, where we're going to find ourselves in 2020 is, is where we really started 2020 with. When January and February were showing such strong job growth, I think that fundamental situation hasn't changed. It's just seen through a pandemic lens now. I think the fundamental keys for Texas's workforce and how workforce impacts the economy uh, remain unchanged. Simply put, if 100% if of the jobs in this state are created by employers, one of TWC's primary tasks remains making sure that employers know how to find the skilled talent that they need for that company to be successful in this state. Which means that all those individual Texans that are working there uh, can find success for themselves and their families. And it's just an incontrovertible fact that when individual Texans are successful, and if as many individual Texans can be successful as we can help, then Texas as a state becomes more successful. We've got real opportunities to do that. Whether you access one of these programs or, or you're just simply putting uh, the right pieces in place so the employers can continue to find those employees, those types of things really set us up well for 2021 and the opportunities that'll come our way. I was working in January, February of 2020, quite a bit on what, what I call the middle skills gap. I think there's a number of, of jobs that people could be promoted into. I think it's a fundamental issue in terms of what skills they possess that they did not acquire, either through some, some post-secondary education they just didn't get to, or they didn't get the right kind of on-the-job training. You know what? 
the why becomes less important than the what. And the what is this. We, we've got probably, I mean, it's hard to measure, but let's just say, if you would, that there's a million jobs out there that fall into this middle skills gap. That if we could get folks some kind of quality training, some, some credential of consequence, that they could put to work and move themselves up in the company, that does two things. It's improved the financial position of that household, and it's created an opportunity at the entry level for another household. That kind of incremental gain in workforce is so critical for us to work on. And it's meetings like this one where we will continue to build on that fact to really help keep the Texas workforce gaining the way we've seen it and the way we'd like for it to do and it gives us a great platform for the future. And I'll finish by saying these things. That's not gonna happen all by itself. That kind of focus on, on the middle skills gap or matching employees with employers and employers with employees, ensuring that people uh, continue to position themselves so they can fully participate in the workforce, doesn't happen by itself. And it doesn't happen solely at TWC. You know, we talk about workforce enough. I was. Uh, four and a half years, Governor Abbott's, uh, one of his chief advisors on economic development issues. I sat in on a lot of pitch meetings where communities were, were talking to a company, trying to get that company to create jobs in that community. I don't remember a single time where we did not discuss workforce. Not one time. We talked about workforce every single time. And what that tells me is, is that it's always going to be a topic, but I don't always perceive that, that all the people that are involved with this are talking with one another. And I think if we can all do a better job of coming together and understanding the power of what we're doing, you know, I, I think we can speed things up and, and maybe do that much better job, particularly with the situation we find ourselves in the pandemic. I uh, remain convinced, and I've said many, many times, that our business environment, our culture of business in Texas it is actually not our number one recruiting tool. So many people outside the state believe it's our business environment, but I'm telling you it's the workforce. It, that's what the businesses really wanna plug into. It's the people of Texas. Now, our business environment's a great retention tool because if you come here looking for the very best employees and you start doing business here, you're gonna realize this is a great state to do business in. Those two things working together have really situated our economy uh, where it was in February of this year and where I think we can really push it back to in 2021. We still uh, have some things to deal with with the pandemic. Let's don't minimize those things. But if we stay focused on the people, if we stay focused on the businesses, if we stay focused on the communities, I think we have so many tools at our disposal, a lot of which you're going to hear about in this meeting today. I really think we can get to where we need to be. So, Mary, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to say a few words. I'm so excited about things you guys are working on. Uh, so much enthusiasm in your crew, uh, so many good folks working on so many things. I know it's hard to keep it all sorted out, but you've got a great crowd today. We're up to 208. I've been watching the ticker go as I went because I was trying to see how many people I was running off and it hasn't been any. We've added a few people while I kept talking. I'm gonna stop talking now so they'll stick around. Um, so, so excited to hear some things that you guys are working on. Uh, I hope the crowd is too, because this is some, this is some powerful things, and I think it's going to push us to a powerful place where we can get some things done. And to our panelists, um, touching on that idea of, of innovation and how evaluate what we're doing and how we can do it better. Um, and certainly we've, that we're taking our cues from business on that. So, um, so thanks for sharing some time with us this morning for kicking us off. Um, we really appreciate My it. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So um, before we get started, I, you know, obviously we had a little technical glitch a little while ago, and I want to acknowledge the, the work that goes on behind the scenes for anything like this. We have an amazing team here at TWC, um, and, and y'all heard me um, call out Julia a moment ago, um, who, 
who works tirelessly to, to pull these things off. And um, in spite of, of any technical glitches we have on our end, they do a fantastic job supporting us and, and pulling us through. So um, to the TWC team behind the scenes, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Uh, before we get started on our agenda today, one more thing. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the newest team member in, here in the Office of Employer Initiatives. Um, Christy Cavanis um, is about to share uh, what's on the agenda for today. Um, and Christy is the manager of uh, employer engagement and community outreach here at TWC. Christy brings extensive experience with corporate operations, including management, marketing, and communications. And most recently, she worked in economic development and the travel tourism industry um, in the city of Lubbock. So um, Christy, good morning. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Um, I'm honored to be here and to have the opportunity to work with this incredibly talented team of professionals. And there's nothing better than promoting the great state of Texas. I'm also really excited to learn alongside you about all the programs the OEI team manages. Today, we will discuss Skills Development Fund, Recruit Texas, Skills for Small Business, Self-Sufficiency Fund, and the JET program, Jobs and Education for Texas. I want to give a shout out to the planning team who put all of this together. Great job making the magic happen. The first session, the new face of skills, will begin at 945. This session will explore the Skills Development Fund and Recruit Texas. I'm looking at the time. So grab your cup of coffee and be back here in about 17 minutes and we'll get started. Thanks for being here with us today. <laughs> 